My name is Anastasia. Mm -hmm. I'm a vet. Um, whenever I say that, uh, people think I mean veteran. Um, I don't. I mean veterinarian, but good for gender equality that they assumed that I was in this service. Um, and the question of the day is, have you ever been depressed? Uh, and I have. Um, my depression is kind of episodic and it was actually a lot scarier for me the second time it happened than the first time because the first time was shortly after uh, the sexual assault when I was 17 and so it was it felt like it was in response to something and it was a little bit easier for me to parse it and you know seemed like a reasonable way of dealing with trauma and so that was something that was you know hard and a bad stretch in my life but um the second time, you know, I was I was in vet school, um, I was going into my final year, and I just, like, stopped sleeping the summer before my, my final year in vet school, which is not, not a good time, uh, and I was under a lot of stress then, um, but it, I really had to confront that, like, I was dealing with something that was, you know, it, it's the beast inside you, it's not, it's not an external thing. Um, and that was a lot harder than um, the first time when I, I could explain it and externalize it in a way that I, I couldn't a second time. So um, I've been on antidepressants ever since that second episode. I, I didn't get enough help the first time um, and just kind of worked through it with friends. Um, and my big thing now is that I'm having a lot of trouble getting them covered by my insurance. And so they want to switch my meds, um, but I can't be seen by anybody for like six or seven months. That's, that's the waiting list on places that my insurance will cover. So um, that's like, I'm, I'm trying to do what they want and there's just a lot of obstacles in the way. And while I was trying to sort this out this week, I was in, in like a waiting room, waiting on getting my car fixed, and an ad comes on um, the TV that, you know, one, one in five New Yorkers has mental health issues and you should get help, and I'm like, I wish it were as easy as just, you know, acknowledging that and asking, because there, there are actually so many hurdles in our healthcare system that, that make it really broken to interact with, um, even if you get to the point where you're like, okay, I acknowledge that this is a problem um, and something I need help with. Um, it's it's not as simple as, as that, and I, I wish that that's you know the only step you have to take because that's hard enough as it is uh, for people. So yeah, I'm, I'm in an okay place right now, but it's kind of uncertain, you know, whether I can keep doing what I need to do for myself. Uh, do do would you or do would you be able to share any uh, advice for someone that would let's say be in something of a similar situation that I, may not know what you know? Okay, um, I'd say cultivate your support networks mm -hmm. um, and kind of let the people around you be your medicine um, mm -hmm. because. Uh, Sometimes what you need from them is not something that's um, going to drain or affect them in any way. You know, sometimes all you want from them is their presence. And especially if, you know, um, you have more than one person that you can rely on, where you can kind of spread your needs out among others in a, in a way that everyone can cope with. Um, I think that's been the biggest thing for me is really, like... Accept when people will let you lean on them hmm. um, and, uh, you know, to take the help you're given. Can I just ask you also, you're wearing a button that says Feminist Killjoy. Yeah. I'm just really <laughs> curious, um, what, what is that about? Um, this, this was a birthday present I got for myself a, a, a couple years ago. Um... I I like it. I, I identify as a feminist. Um, and I 
<laughs> where this is kind of a confrontational thing, I, I think, but then when people actually talk to me, they're like, oh, you, you're so nice, so I'm like, oh, yeah, but I won't take shit from you either. <laughs>